Silcare Flight 185 was a scheduled Silcare passenger flight operated by a Boeing 737-300 from Jakarta, Indonesia, to Singapore, that crashed into the Musi River near Palembang in southern Sumatra, on 19 December 1997, killing all 97 passengers and seven crew on board. The cause of the crash was independently investigated by two agencies in two countries, the United States National Transportation Safety Board and the Indonesian National Transportation Safety Committee NTSC. The NTSB, which had jurisdiction based on Boeing's manufacture of the aircraft in the United States, investigated the crash under lead investigator Greg Feith. Its investigation concluded that the crash was the result of deliberate flight control inputs, most likely by the captain. The Indonesian NTSC, led by engineering professor Oetajo Duran, was unable to determine a cause of the crash. Another potential factor that led to the crash of the 737 aircraft was the power control unit PCU that controlled the aircraft's rudder. The cause of some 737 crashes, such as US Air Flight 427, had been attributed to the 737's rudder issues. Although the NTSB and PCU manufacturer Parker Hannafin had already determined that the PCU was properly working, and thus not the cause of the crash, a private investigation into the crash for a civil lawsuit tried by jury in a state court in Los Angeles, which was not allowed to hear or consider the NTSB's and Parker Hannafin's conclusions, decided that the crash was caused by a defective servo valve inside the PCU, based on forensic findings from an electron microscope which determined that minute defects within the PCU CU had caused the rudder hard over and a subsequent uncontrollable flight and crash. The manufacturer of the aircraft's rudder controls and the families later reached an out-of-court settlement. Aircraft <inaudible> 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 The aircraft operating Flight 185 was a Boeing 737-300 with manufacturer serial number 28556, registered as 9 volts TRF and was powered by two CFM56-3 B2 engines. Having completed its maiden flight in January 1997, the aircraft was delivered to Silcare in February 1997, ten months before the crash. At the time of the accident, it was the newest aircraft in Silcare's fleet and had accumulated 2,238 flight hours in 1,306 cycles. This is the first and only fatal hull loss for Silcare. <laughs> accident Carrying 97 passengers and a crew of seven, the Boeing 737 departed Jakarta's Soekarno Hatta International Airport's runway 25R at 15:37 local time (8:37 Coordinated Universal Time) for a planned 80-minute flight to Singapore Changi Airport with Captain Su Wei Ming, Zhu Wei Min 41, of Singapore, a former A4 Skyhawk pilot, at the controls along with First Officer Duncan Ward, 23, of New Zealand. Generally fair weather was expected for the route, except for some thunderstorms near Sinkep Island, 120 kilometers (75 miles) south of Singapore. The aircraft was cleared to climb to flight level 350 (FL 350), about 35,000 feet (11,000 meters), and to head directly to Palembang. At 15 hours 47 minutes and 6 seconds, while climbing through 24,500 feet 7,468 meters, the crew requested clearance to proceed directly to waypoint PARDI 0 degrees 34 S 104 degrees 13 E. At 15.53, the crew reported reaching the cruise altitude of FL 350 and was cleared to proceed directly to PARDI, and to report a beam Palembang. The cockpit voice recorder CVR ceased recording at 16.05. The TV series Mayday argues Captain Sue may have taken the opportunity of leaving the cockpit for tripping the CVR circuit breaker in order to turn off the CVR. At 16.10, the air traffic controller informed the flight that it was a beam Palembang and instructed the aircraft to maintain FL 350 and to contact Singapore Control upon reaching PARDI. First Officer Ward acknowledged this call. At 1611, nearly six minutes after the CVR ceased recording, the Flight Data Recorder also stopped recording. 
Mayday shows that Sue is thought probably to have come up with an excuse to get Duncan out of the cockpit. Having done so, the pilot then proceeded to lock his co-pilot out of the flight deck before disabling the data recorder. Sue is presumed to have done this in order to ensure that there would be no record of what he was going to do next. Flight 185 remained level at FL 350 until it started a rapid and nearly vertical dive around 1612. While descending through 12,000 feet 3, meters, parts of the aircraft, including a great extent of the tail section, started to separate from the aircraft's fuselage due to high forces arising from the nearly supersonic dive. Seconds later, the aircraft impacted the Musi River, near Palembang, Sumatra, killing all 104 people on board. The time it took the aircraft to dive from cruise altitude to the river was less than one minute. The plane was traveling faster than the speed of sound for a few seconds before impact. Parts of the wreckage were embedded 15 feet into the riverbed. The aircraft broke into pieces before impact, with the debris spread over several kilometers, though most of the wreckage was concentrated in a single 60 meter 200 feet by 80 meter 260 feet area at the river bottom. No complete body, body part, or limb was found, as the entire aircraft and passengers disintegrated upon impact. Only six positive identifications were later obtained from the few recovered human remains. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Passengers and crew. Silk Air issued a press release on the 19th of December 1997 with a passenger count by nationality and another the following day with crew details and a complete passenger manifest. Among those killed in the crash was Singaporean model and author Bonnie Hicks. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Investigation and final report. The accident was investigated by the Indonesian NTSC, which was assisted by expert groups from the US, Singapore, and Australia. Around 73% of the wreckage by weight was recovered, partially reconstructed, and examined. Both of the aircraft recorders, the CVR cockpit voice recorder and the FDR flight data recorder were retrieved from the river and their data were extracted and analyzed. At 1600, the CVR showed that Captain Sue left the cockpit. Five seconds later, the CVR stopped recording. Tests indicated that a click would be heard on the CVR recording if the CVR circuit breaker had tripped normally, but not if it had been pulled out manually. As there was no click, it is likely that Captain Sue pulled out the CVR circuit breaker before leaving the cockpit. The NTSC and NTSB investigators thought that if Captain Sue was responsible for the crash, he must have made up some excuse to get the first officer to leave the flight deck prior to disabling the FDR, which would have immediately triggered a master caution on both pilots' control panels, so that his actions would not be noticed. Several minutes later, as recorded by Indonesian ground radar, the aircraft entered a rapid descent, disintegrated, and crashed into the Musi River. On 14 December 2000, after three years of investigation, the Indonesian NTSC issued its final report. The NTSC chairman overrode the findings of his investigators—that the crash was caused deliberately by pilot input—so that the report stated that the evidence was inconclusive and that the cause of the accident could not be determined. The US NTSB, which also participated in the investigation, concluded that the evidence was consistent with a deliberate manipulation of the flight controls, most likely by the captain. In a letter to the NTSC dated the 11th of December 2000, the NTSB wrote, "The examination of all of the factual evidence is consistent with the conclusions that one, no airplane-related mechanical malfunctions or failures caused or contributed to the accident, and two, the accident can be explained by intentional pilot action." Specifically, a, the accident airplane's flight profile is consistent with sustained manual nose-down flight control inputs, b, the evidence suggests that the cockpit voice recorder CVR, was intentionally disconnected, c, recovery of the airplane was possible but not attempted, and d, it is more likely that the nose-down flight control inputs were made by the captain than by the first officer. Jeffrey Thomas of the Sydney Morning Herald said that a secret report confirmed that the Indonesian authorities would not issue a public verdict because they feared it would make their own people too frightened to fly. 
Santoso Sayogo, an NTSC investigator who worked on the Silcare 185 case, said that the NTSB opinion was shared by some Indonesian investigators, who were overruled by their boss. Potential motives In the aftermath of the crash, several potential motives for the captain's alleged suicide and homicide were suggested, including recent financial losses of $1.2 million his share trading showed trading of more than 1 million shares and his securities trading privileges had been suspended 10 days before the accident due to non-payment, his obtaining a $600,000 life insurance policy the previous week which was to have gone into effect on the day of the accident though it later emerged that this was a routine policy taken out as part of of a mortgage requirement, his receipt of several recent disciplinary actions on the part of the airline including one that related to improper manipulation of the CVR circuit breaker, and the loss of four squadron mates during his military flight training, 18 years earlier on the exact date of the crash. He had also had several conflicts with Ward and other co-pilots who had questioned his command suitability. Investigations later revealed that his total assets were greater than his liabilities. Although his liquid assets could not cover his immediate debts, his monthly income was less than his family's monthly expenditure, and he had some outstanding credit card debts. An official investigation by the Singapore Police Force into evidence of criminal offence leading to the crash found no evidence that the pilot, co pilot, or any crew member had suicidal tendencies or a motive to deliberately cause the crash of the aircraft. Su was formerly a Republic of Singapore Air Force pilot and had over 20 years of flying experience in the older T.A4S Skyhawks, as well as the newer T.A4SU Super Skyhawks. His last appointment was instructor pilot of a Skyhawk squadron. PA announcement Captain Su made what appeared to be a routine public address announcement about the flight at 15 hours 44 minutes and 37 seconds, about seven minutes after takeoff, which was recorded by the CVR and transcribed by the NTSC. Su's announcement ended at 15.46. At 16.05, 19 minutes later, the CVR stopped recording. Six minutes later, at 16.11, the FDR stopped recording, and at 16.12 the aircraft plunged into its fatal dive. CVR and FDR deactivation The cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder stopped recording minutes before the abrupt descent, but not at the same time. The CVR stopped functioning approximately six minutes before the dive as the captain was leaving the cockpit for a short break. The FDR was deactivated five minutes later approximately one minute before the dive. Overload and short circuit tests show that a distinctive 400HZ tone is recorded by the CVR when the CVR circuit breaker trips. The investigators could not find this sound on Flight 185's CVR, which made them conclude that the CVR circuit breaker was manually pulled out. The radio continued to work after the failure of the CVR, which indicates that power failure was not the cause. Subsequent investigations, including a National Geographic Channel documentary, revealed that this FDR had previously failed, for periods lasting between 10 seconds and 10 minutes. Testing of the unit by NTSC found no evidence that a malfunction or failure caused either recorder to stop recording data. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Servo valve issue. Starting in 1991, several accidents and incidents involving the Boeing 737 were the result of uncommanded movement of their rudders. On 3 March 1991, United Airlines Flight 585, a 737-200, crashed in Colorado Springs, Colorado, killing 25 people. On 8 September 1994, U.S. Air Flight 427, a 737-300, crashed near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, killing 132 people. There were four more incidents where a 737 Rudder Power Control Unit PCU malfunction was suspected. The Seattle Times devoted a series of 37 articles to Boeing 737 loss of control malfunctions. 
The accident occurred in the middle of a controversy over the NTSB's role in accidents caused by the rudder control unit. During the investigation of Flight 427, the NTSB discovered that the PCU's dual servo valve could jam, as well, and deflect the rudder in the opposite direction of the pilot's input, due to thermal shock, caused when cold PCUs are injected with hot hydraulic fluid. As a result of this finding, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA ordered the servo valves to be replaced and new training protocol for pilots to handle unexpected movement of flight controls to be developed. The FAA ordered an upgrade of all Boeing 737 rudder control systems by the 12th of November 2002. According to the series Mayday, the rudder issue had been corrected before construction started on the accident aircraft. Nevertheless, the theory of a rudder malfunction was investigated with the possibility of corrosion of and or debris getting stuck in the power control unit, and was disproved. <laughs> Aftermath Lawsuits <laughs> 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 Silcare paid $10,000 compensation to each victim's family, the maximum under the Warsaw Convention. Boeing also paid an undisclosed amount of compensation. In 2001, six families who had sued Silcare for damages based on the allegation that the crash was caused by the pilot were turned down by a Singapore High Court judge, who ruled that the onus of proving that flight MI-185 was intentionally crashed has not been discharged. Despite the fact that the NTSB and Parker Hannafin had already ruled out the possibility of mechanical failure as a cause to the crash of Flight 185 due to a defective PCU servo valve unit manufactured by Parker Hannafin, an independent and private investigation refocused on and further examined the recovered PCU device whose malfunctioning has been pointed out in other sudden Boeing 737 crashes. The manufacturer's records relating to this particular unit revealed that it had failed some routine tests, but they claimed to have corrected these problems. A metals expert, with the use of images from a scanning electron microscope, concluded that the servo valve had chip outs and numerous burrs that could easily have interfered with the smooth operation of the valve. After this investigation was complete, in 2004, a Los Angeles Superior Court jury in the United States, which was not allowed to hear or consider the NTSB's conclusions about the accident, found that the crash was caused by a defective servo valve in the plane's rudder. The hydraulic PCU device manufacturer, Parker Hannafin, was ordered to pay the three families of victims involved in that case $43.6 million. After threatening to appeal the verdict, Parker Hannafin later compensated all families involved although it did not accept liability. Silcare In the aftermath of the crash, as well as with worsening conditions for Asian aviation in general due to the financial crisis, Silcare terminated its Singapore Jakarta service, and has not returned since. Prior to the crash, the route was served by both Silcare and parent company Singapore Airlines. As of 2017, the route, which is the second busiest international route in the world, is served by Singapore Airlines and its budget offshoot Scoot, which combined, serve Jakarta a combined 79 times weekly up to 12 daily flights. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dramatization. The Discovery Channel Canada, National Geographic TV series Mayday also called Air Crash Investigation or Air Disasters dramatized the accident in a 2013 episode titled Pushed to the Limit, broadcast in some countries as pilot under pressure. In popular culture Singaporean singer J. J. Lin, Lin Junji's 2013 song Practice Love, Ziu Lian I King from the album Stories Untold Yin Ni Erzai is based on this accident, as a close friend of the artist was killed on the flight. See also Footnotes <laughs> <laughs>